Good morning, boys and girls. I am Miss Laura, and I'm just so excited to be able to teach you a little bit about God's Word today. I've missed seeing you um, at Awana this year, and I missed being with you in the KidVid uh, zone, KidVid room at VBS this year. You know, it's been a different year for all of us, um, adults and children alike. And even though school has changed uh, for you, even though sports has changed for you this year, even though dance lessons or music lessons look different for you this year, there's one thing that never changes, and that's the fact that God loves you. He loves you so much, and he wants you to talk with him every day. That's what prayer is, um, talking to God and, and sharing with God the things that are on your heart and whatever is on your mind. Um, God loves for you to talk to him about happy things and sad things, about good things that are happening, and even hard things that are going on in your life. God just loves when you talk to him. I remember at Awana when Miss Carrie or, or um, Miss Susan would ask uh, one of you children to pray at the Awana uh, meetings, and I love to hear you, your, you children pray. I, I love to hear you talk to God. And I think you children can teach us adults a whole lot about prayer and about how to pray. Well, today's story in our Jesus Storybook Bible um, comes from the book of Matthew, and it is a story about prayer. And it's found on page 222 in your Bible if you want to read along. It comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, and it is a story about prayer. You see, in the Bible, there were some very proud people, some adults who thought they knew the only way to pray. They thought that they were experts in prayer. But Jesus knew that they had it all wrong. And Jesus wanted to teach us, children and adults, how to pray. He wanted us to follow his way and to follow um, his leading. And so I would encourage you to listen carefully as we read the story together about prayer found on page 222 in the Bible, in your storybook Bible. The title is How to Pray. In those days, there were some extra super holy people. At least that's what they thought. And they were called Pharisees. Can you say Pharisee? Every day, you hear the men, they would stand out there in the middle of the street and pray out loud in big, extra, super holy voices. They really weren't praying so much as they were just showing off. They used lots of special words that were so clever, no one even understood what they meant. You see these men standing in the middle of the street. People walking by would stop and stare, which might sound rude, except that's exactly what the extra super holy people wanted. They wanted everyone to say, look at them. They're so holy. God must love these people the best. These men right here. Do you think that's true? Now you and I both know they were wrong. God doesn't just love holy people, but the people walking by weren't so sure. Perhaps you did have to be really clever or good or important for God to love you. Perhaps you had to know lots of difficult, big, clever, important words to be able to speak to God. So one day, Jesus taught people how to pray. He invited people to come and sit down so that he could teach them how to pray. He said, when you pray, don't pray like those extra, super holy people. They think if they say lots of words, long prayers, that God will hear them. But it's not because you're so clever or good or so important that God will listen to you. God listens to you because he loves you. Did you know that God is always listening to you? Did you know that God can hear the quiet whisper deep inside your heart even before you've started to say it? Because God knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. That's what Jesus told them. 
You see, God can't just can't wait to give you all that you need every day. So you don't need to use long words or big words or special words when you talk to God. You don't have to use a special voice when you talk to God. You don't have to just be at church when you talk to God. You just have to talk to him. So when you pray, pray in your normal voice, just like when you're talking to someone you love very much, just like this. And this is a prayer, kind of it gives us an idea of how to pray to God. We don't have to repeat this exact prayer, but this gives us an idea. The prayer says, hello, Daddy, because God is our Heavenly Father. So it's almost like talking to your Heavenly Daddy. We want to know you and be close to you. Please show us how. Make everything in the world right again and in our hearts too. Do what is best, just like you do in heaven. Please do it down here on earth too. Please give us everything we need today. Forgive us for doing wrong for hurting you. Forgive us just as we forgive other people when they hurt us. Rescue us, God. We need you. We don't want to keep running away and hiding from you. Keep us safe from our enemies, from those bullies, from those unkind people. You're strong, God. You can do whatever you want. You are in charge now and forever and for always. God, we think you're great. Amen. Yes, we do. That's a good prayer. You don't have to pray those exact words, but that gives us an idea of how to pray. You see, Jesus was showing people that God would always love them with a never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. So they didn't need to hide anymore or be afraid or ashamed. They could stop running away from God and they could run to him instead. Just like a little child runs into her daddy's arms. That's what God wants us to do, to run into his arms as we pray. The prayer that I just shared from our uh, storybook Bible um, is another way of saying the Lord's Prayer. Um, and the Lord's Prayer is our memory verse or verses um, for this week. And I've written it out for you so that you can say it along with me. It's kind of a long prayer and it has some big words. Um, and you can ask somebody at home to maybe help you um, in memorizing this uh, prayer or to memorize part of it. Um, again, we don't have to say this exact prayer when we pray to God. It's just a model. It gives us an idea of things to pray for and how to pray. So let's, um, let's read the Lord's Prayer um, together. It's found in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. Our Father in heaven, that's who we're praying to, to our heavenly Father God. Hallowed be your name. And hallowed is another word for holy. So we're saying, God, your, your name is holy. Your kingdom come. We're praying that God's kingdom will come on earth. We're praying that people will come to know Jesus and be a part of God's kingdom and that God will reign. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Rather than our will being done. We're praying for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And we can pray more than just for bread to eat. We can pray for whatever our, our need may be, for help with our schoolwork. We can pray for patience with our brothers and sisters. We can pray that God will make us well when we're feeling sick. And forgive us our sins, those are the wrong things that we do, the mistakes we make, as we also forgive 
everyone who sins against us. So we're asking God to forgive us, and we're saying to God that we're going to forgive others who hurt us as well. And lead us not into temptation, and we're asking God to help us not make mistakes, but deliver us from evil, and that's from the bad things that are in this world. We want God's protection over us. You know, that's a long prayer with some big words, but I know some of you children can memorize that at home with your mom or dad or grandma. I've made it simpler for you by giving you three main things, three main things to pray about um, that come from the Lord's Prayer. And I hope this week and in coming weeks, you'll um, remember that you can talk to God about anything and you can talk to God at any time. But here are three things to just help you um, to keep in the back of your mind when you're praying. The first thing is to tell God to thank you, to thank God for who he is and for what he does. And I know each one of you children have things that you're thankful for. Um, when you think about things that you're thankful for, you can thank God that he's loving and that he's kind and that he's forgiving. You can thank God for the beautiful weather. You can thank God for your mom or dad or your grandparents, your teachers. You can thank God for your cats and dogs. You can thank God for pumpkins and ice cream and beautiful trees outside. So that first word starts with the letter T, thanking God. Second of all, remember to tell God what you're sorry for. God, we all make mistakes. Parents make mistakes. I make mistakes. Pastor Kevin and Pastor Alex make mistakes. Your teachers make mistakes. But it's, it's important to tell God you're sorry when you've been disobedient or when you've been unkind to a brother or sister. Maybe you've been whining. Maybe you've had a bad attitude. Maybe you haven't told the truth. Just tell God, I'm sorry for that. And God will forgive you as you ask him to do so. The third letter, third word begins with the letter P. So T for thank you, God. I for I'm sorry. And P for please help me. And help somebody else who's needing um, God's help today. You know, we all need God's help. And I know you, as you've started this new school year, as you started coming back to church, I know that there are things that you need help with. And you can ask God's help for anything that you're needing. You can also ask God to help your parents or your teachers. You can ask God to help your grandparents. Maybe someone is sick and needs God's help. Maybe somebody is discouraged and you can ask God to help them. Maybe... Um, Somebody has lost something. Maybe you have a friend who doesn't know Jesus, and you can ask God to help them to come to know Jesus. I want to encourage you today. If you're praying for someone, if you're praying for your mom or dad, if you're praying for a brother or sister, if you're praying for Pastor Kevin or Pastor Alex or Miss Michelle, would you let them know? Be a blessing by letting someone know that you prayed for them. Because moms and dads and grandmas and teachers and pastors and friends, they are all blessed when they know that you are praying for them. So tell them that you're doing so. You know, yesterday I was having kind of a hard day. Um, my parents were dealing with some challenges and my parents live a long ways away. And then I had two of my daughters, they are out hiking in some mountains uh, way across the country in the state of Utah. And all I could think about were mountain lions and bears. And so I had them on my mind. And then Pastor Kevin, he was feeling kind of tired and weary. And so there were a lot of things on my mind yesterday. And I had been out um, with some different people yesterday. And when I came home, I came home and saw that there was a, a message on our phone, a voicemail. And when I listened to that message, this is what the person said. This was a friend of ours, of, of Pastor Kevin's and mine. And he said that he and his wife were praying for Pastor Kevin and me. They said that they were praying for my parents, that they were praying for our girls who were traveling. And he said that they were praying for God to give strength and energy and encouragement to Pastor Kevin and me. 
Do you know how that made me feel? That encouraged my heart so much to know that somebody was praying for Pastor Kevin and me. And so you can encourage someone in the same way when you tell them on Sunday or sometime during the week that I prayed for you yesterday and I asked God to help you. So remember that you can pray or talk to God anytime or any place, in the morning, at lunchtime, in the evening, anytime during the day. Remember to thank God for the ways in which he has blessed you. Thank God for who he is. Remember to tell God that you're sorry for the mistakes that you've made and times that um, you've made poor choices. And third, remember that you can say, please, God, help me. Please help me and my family, help my friends, help my grandma, my grandpa. God loves when you pray to him. And I um, am so thankful for each one of your, you children and for the ways in which you're growing in uh, talking to God. Let's pray. Dear Father, I thank you so much for these children. I thank you for their faith in Jesus. I thank you, Father, for the courage that you have given them this school year when things are so very different. I thank you that uh, you love each one of these children and that you care for them so much. Dear God, we're, we're sorry when we forget to pray. We, we're sorry when we're too busy to pray. We're sorry, Father, that we um, forget how much you want to talk to us each day. We thank you that you forgive us, Lord, when we make mistakes. And Father, I pray that you would help um, these boys and girls during this new school year. I pray, Father, that they would be good learners. I pray, Father, that you would help them to have good attitudes. I pray, Father, that you would help them to be kind to their brothers and sisters. I pray, Father, that um, you would just encourage these students this year, and most of all, just help them to know how much you love them and how much you want to talk to them and how much they can teach us about prayer. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week, and um, I'll look forward to seeing you at church on Sunday. Bye-bye.